Hey everybody, welcome to Matt Men, your source for all things professional wrestling. I'm Andrew Zarian, a nice little two-week break from the show here. But as always, I'm joined by the one, the only, the oosiest of the oosie, Rich Stambolian. Mwah, what's going on, man? It's been two weeks. Thank you guys for your patience. Uh, we're back. Mm-hmm. It was a it was a very chaotic couple of weeks. Uh, I'm still dealing with this chaos with work. Yeah, crazy. Uh, the boys know what's going on, but it's been it's been challenging. So I've been very yeah. busy. I've been running around Manhattan like a lunatic, but things mm -hmm. are kind of settling now. So we're back. <laughs> Yeah, didn't you buy into the uh, Naked Cowboy franchise? That's why you're running around Manhattan? It, it ruined, it ruined, it, it, I thought that thing was such a great idea. 2008, they're like, listen, this guy is in his under underwears, and he's just like playing the guitar. I'm like, man, that's great, we could franchise this. Little did I know, what the hell do you do in the winter? Exactly, you still have to be in the underwears, and you, you still, still have gotta be to, in the underwears. underwear and cowboy hat all winter long. I'm convinced that guy's from another planet. <laughs> Do you know there's the the there's a naked cowboy and there's a naked cowgirl? Yes. And there's they're more. at he, odds with each other. He has sold that his gimmick out to tourists. Uh I don't think he's done it for a while though. I don't know. He he's he's up there now. Demon Diva, NYC Demon Diva says, Count your days, Zary, and I'm back next week. They'll ever uh -oh. ever let you out of that island. I'm gonna call them. She's I'm gonna be like, listen, don't let her out. Let her stay there. She can't leave. She's the queen of the island now. She is the queen of the island. I'm excited. Let me know. We'll get drinks. Guys, a lot to talk about today, obviously. Uh, but before we continue, I want to thank our sponsor, and that's NordVPN. Try it risk-free with a 30-day money-back guarantee. NordVPN.com slash F4W. You know, we could talk about why you should use a VPN. I use a VPN all the time. Rich, you use a VPN also. To the point oh, that how many times, you know, we talk about this whole time. I'm like, Rich, turn off the VPN. One secret. of the key things, like I use it because I'm always out in different offices. I'm connecting to Wi-Fi's constantly. You know, that extra layer of protection goes a long way. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan, of, and I'm a subscriber to NordVPN. So, like, this is like an easy read for me to do, and I'm not even going to look at a copy. But something else that you could use NordVPN for, and a lot of people don't know this, is, you know, if you log into Netflix and you got a VPN connecting in another country or another, yeah, most likely another country, guess what happens? That entire platform changes for you shows that you did not even imagine uh that you could access are now on these streaming platforms because it's different rights in different countries i think it's a fantastic way to kind of find content that you want i also think it's a fantastic way to give yourself a little extra layer of protection when you're surfing the webs mm -hmm. try it risk-free with a 30-day money-back guarantee listen how how great is that nordvpn.com slash f4w i want to thank nordvpn for supporting Mattman. Rich. Yes, sir. You also have to thank our veterans. Today is Veterans yes, today's Day. Today's Veterans so. Day, and, and Jonathan is a veteran, uh, our own Jonathan Risk. He is a veteran, and uh, he actually did a video for Justice School Project. Very cool. Yeah, he sent the video. Uh, we just did a uh, Veterans Day video uh, yesterday at school, and he was one of them. You know, the, it was a ragtag group of people in that veterans video. It was Jessica's Uncle Ronnie. It was, okay. which I think you've met. Uh, it was Chauncey Hayden from the Howard Stern Show. Wow. <laughs> and Jonathan Risk. Wow. That's, that. you know what? That's a, that's a good combination right there. It's a little bit of a Motley crew, but, yeah, you know, listen, we, great, got, we got the Navy, combo. we got the Marines, and we got the Air Force, so we covered it. We just needed the Army. So uh, happy uh, Veterans Day to uh, all our veterans out there, and, of course, uh, people still serving in the uh, absolutely. military. And thank you Let's, for your service. And thank you for yours, and also with you, Rich. Uh, you know, <laughs> where do you want to go? <laughs> you know what? Let's. Uh, Aaron Banks in the chat had a great suggestion to start off the show. Yeah. Let's talk about Chris Jericho on the mass singer before we get into all the wrestling stuff for so, this week. Okay, you go into it because I missed a lot of this yesterday. So is he on the mask singer? Did they unveil it's him or is going to be unveiled? Dude, like, I don't know if they unveiled him, but he is clearly that giant pink dinosaur. Like, there's no other person that sounds like that, especially because he doesn't have have all decks on his voice so he just sounds like chris jericho doing karaoke oh that's really funny that's really funny yeah all right I, mean, I, I do you watch that show i've never seen it 
it's a lot of fun honestly like i go in and out of it like if it's i i don't seek it out it's not appointment television for me you know hmm. but if it's on and there's nothing else like i'll put it on for background noise because some of this stuff is a lot of fun you know like that t-pain reveal from i think last year a couple of years ago was awesome i'm also a big t-pain fan so <laughs> that's i i had no idea he was even on it yeah i had no idea so let's let's find where to go from here okay. because I don't know where to begin. We have two weeks worth of stories. Uh, you pick where where you want to go, Rich, and I will follow your lead. I'll hold your hand and continue. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stick to the notes. Um, this was kind of an interesting like week and a half of pro wrestling. You know, like we had Crown Jewel, we had some like cool stuff happening across the board with wrestling. But on last week's Rampage, uh, Orange Cassidy beat Shibata. That's yes. Shibata. Shibata. Ran, okay, while Mike the Tyson's calling the match, right? Yes. So I actually, I watched that live. I thought it was a really fun show. Uh, Mike Tyson mm -hmm. did a fantastic job. Uh, he called an STO. He called all this stuff. I mean, he, he has some wrestling IQ, this dude. Uh, you could tell he's very much, uh, very much into pro wrestling. I thought this was fun. The Rampage numbers held up. I think they were almost, they were like 485 or whatever it was. I can't remember. Something around there. But... We got to see Orange Cassidy and Shapata. We we've spoken about like the style contrast here, you know, like Rich, what yeah. what I like in wrestling, what Rich likes in wrestling, what we both like in wrestling. I did not imagine I would enjoy this match as much as I did. I thought it was mm -hmm. great. Also, I mean, I really feel like you can't. It it was almost like the triple threat. Like you cannot talk about Mike Tyson on commentary enough during that match too. And this was like we, we talk about this on the show a lot. And this is one of those pro wrestling fanboy, like weird fever dreams. Like, imagine if I called you on the phone and it was like, dude, I had this really weird dream where Orange Cassidy took on Shibata while Mike Tyson was on commentary. For a and title. Reaction, yeah. And for a title. And your reaction would be like, wow, that's wild. <laughs> that would be, yeah, that would be it. That would exactly, oh, that's wild. You know, um, you know, I think it was, I, it was different. It was something different. I thought Shibata looked great. Uh, yes. I can't believe this man, you know, he's really not. I, how did he get cleared? That's what I want to know. How much progress superhuman. did he make? He is a superhero. I mean, he's been training daily in the dojo. I mean, he's training mm -hmm. these kids. He's in the ring. He's doing stuff. So I guess he built, I guess he built the muscles up and whatever damage that he had kind of reverted back to, you know, not being so much of an issue. I, I'm, I'm surprised considering how serious of an injury this man had. That he's back in the ring. But listen, we're getting Paige also, which we'll get to. You know, the Yeah, dude. Like coming coming back from like the uh, I wanna say like aneurysm slash stroke collapsing in the ring. Nuts. Like completely nuts. Yeah. Uh scary stuff. Scary, scary mm -hmm. stuff. But listen, he looked great. Uh he beat Shibata clean in the middle. Yeah. Which was fascinating. Uh, but Shibata did say there were two people he wanted to face in AEW. One was Orange Cassidy, so this was his pick, and the other one is Brian Danielson. So when do you do that match? You know, I would love to see that match. And also, like, it, this this kind of ties into, like, the interesting philosophy with a lot of Japanese wrestlers, right? Like, do you remember a few years ago where Liger took Cheeseburger under his wing? Yes, he did. Yes. And it's kind of like one of those things where it's, like, really out of left field where the guys in New Japan are just like, you know what? I want to wrestle that guy <laughs> like i want cheeseburger i want orange cassidy it's really interesting because like it, it 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 peels back like another layer of that pro wrestling onion you yeah. know where there's like more than the surface stuff it's like these these guys must see something that's clearly there you know yeah very interesting stuff loved it uh soraya is also cleared yes she is uh she announced that i think on renee's podcast right yeah, it looks like um, on the sessions with Renee, and uh, she's cleared. But where do you see that going? I don't know. You know, she she apparently uh, is 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 it true that she got cleared on like Halloween? It's a good Halloween gift. <laughs> yeah, and and I believe she said that she could do one match a month per her doctor and be evaluated for this. Uh, all right, we'll see what she could do. You know. Scary. WWE did not want to clear, her, did not clear her, but I can tell you they would have loved to clear her if they felt that they could. So I don't know yeah. what happened between, you know, contract negotiation, wanting to wrestle, 
you know, teasing that idea. We've seen a mm -hmm. lot of people return that were injured in the past and they're having, you yeah. know, breakout second runs. I don't know if this is going to be one of those things. I hope it is for her sake. I hope that she's fine and she could work. But, you know, yeah. who's the doctor cleaner? You know, month to month. Let's see what happens. Who do you want to? I mean, like, this is all building up to, like, her versus Britt Baker, right? Well, they're doing that. They're doing Britt Baker on uh, at the show, at the pay-per-view. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm looking forward to it. You know, like, I always get, like, very... Um, empathetic with stuff like this you know as much as you want to see it you're kind of like oh i hope you're gonna be okay <laughs> you know yeah, yeah a couple last week uh bucks omega teaser was shown on dynamite possibly returning at full gear so they've been also filming a documentary backstage so a lot of people think that they were backstage for that and not to be on tv to kind of mm -hmm. piece that documentary together but i would imagine they're back for full gear uh you know do something. Yeah. yeah, they're gonna do like some kind of appearance. Do you think they're gonna do a trio's appearance? I don't know. I don't know what they should do. You know, the the the, the dynamic shifted tremendously. Yeah. Where, you know, you brought Kenny in, he did two matches, and he's gone. And the Bucks mm -hmm. are there and he's gone. Do do you want to put him back in the trios category? Or yeah. do you just move him back to the main event spot? Because that is kind of lacking right now. Yeah, uh, you know, but they can fit anywhere on the card, and as they should, sure. you know, as they should, as they should. But I, I, think, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know for like the long run. You know, like, do you think it's better for AEW for them to be in a trios position right now, or do you think it's better to split split off where where the Bucks are now in the tag division and they could do something with FTR, build that up coming up, and then Kenny could build up the singles run again. I think you start with the trios and end with them splitting again, and just but not like a, not like a turn split. You yeah, know? got it. Um. And have like, you know, Kenny with one belt and then the Bucks with the tag titles. Or you know what? Have Kenny in the uh the intergalactic title or whatever it's called, the transatlantic title. The transatlantic uh locomotive title, yeah. The, the mid Atlantic transatlantic intergalactic title. Yeah. That, <laughs> that's the one. Um that would be interesting. And also like this is this suspension was probably both for both guys, uh both it was healthy for all three guys because they can rest a little bit, right? Well, they got some rest, yeah. I mean, Kenny was well rested for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, he, he wasn't, he hadn't worked in a while, but we'll see what happens. I'm very excited to have these guys come back. I think it's going to be positive for TV and positive for uh, that company. Mm -hmm. AEW to make a UK debut in 2023 about time now that travel is getting much easier. Uh, they'll do great in the UK. They're also. I, do you know that their numbers are fantastic in the UK? I, last I believe week they, it. it's like two hundred and something thousand people that watched uh, last week. They're doing fantastic numbers over there. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll that'll that'll determine how well they do for tickets. MJF confirms to be a part of Iron Claw, the Von Erich story. He's going to be playing Lance Von Erich now. Lance Von Erich was the fake Von Erich, wasn't he? I don't know my Von Erich history. I think you'd okay. have to ask MG Geek on that MG, one. Lance Von Erich is not a Von Erich, right? Lance was a fake one? Yes, Kevin Vaughn was his name. He's a fake Von Erich. This is Correct. when they brought mm -hmm. in, which is really sad, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, when Mike died or, or was, it, was unable to wrestle, uh, he took the place, I believe. Uh, yeah, Mike, Mike was unable to wrestle. Due to toxic it, shock syndrome. Oh my god! And if I re if I recall, it didn't go well because everybody knew he wasn't a Von Eric. Everybody knew because mm -hmm. they said that he was, um, he was billed as the son of Fritz, his brother Waldo. Okay. So he wasn't Fritz's son. He was Waldo's son. So he was like a cousin of a Von Eric. Uh, did not work well. He he did not. He was definitely not a Von Eric. So. Going to be interesting. I mean, this guy's a big jacked up dude. Uh, he was not that great. So I don't know, you know, MJF playing him. I, I, that's going to be interesting. Mm -hmm. But Zach Efron looks insane. Have you seen how jacked this dude is? Yo, Zach Efron is like, oh my God. That that picture, those behind the scenes shots that kind of leaked, blew my mind. I'm to willing be to bet. I am willing to bet that we will see. We will see Zach Efron. Show up on AEW as a Von as 
like Karen, as a right? jacked up dude and they're going to do something with him. I I'm I I don't know my gut feeling is telling me uh-huh. that, that we're going to get this and people are going to be so impressed on how big he is and how well he can move. He's Kevin Von Erich, right? Is he Kevin? Yeah, I, yeah, I think he's Kevin Von Erich, not okay. Kerry. He's not playing Kerry. Um you think he's going to show up and have a match like he'll, he'll be essentially being AEW's version of logan paul sure maybe they could do something like that that's what i'm thinking mm-hmm. yeah that's what i'm thinking fascinating that's fun very that's interesting fun. stuff yeah very uh, you know what I- i'm curious about it i'm curious to see what they do with this i know that they've been wanting to do a von eric movie for a very very long time it's such a tragic story though you know mm-hmm. uh, terribly tragic so we'll see is isn't it interesting that we're we're getting these like now in 2022 like these uh wrestling movies like the Hulk Hogan movie the Vince McMahon yeah, thing Yeah because think about it who's making these Von movies Eric's now stuff. it's us yeah. you know yeah. it's people our age it is true. these movies I want to see that that bonkers Hulk Hogan movie that's what I want to see I want to see Hemsworth as Hogan so bad who knows if that's even still happening but you know that that I think will be like a tr- just to hear him call everybody brother brother <laughs> Brother, brother, brother. Uh, hysterical. Hysterical. Uh, let's see. WWE news. Let's go into this. 24-7 title seems to have been gone. They removed the the, the 24-7 title when uh, Nikki th- Cross threw it in the trash. It is now retired on the website. SmackDown to hold a World Cup tournament with the winner getting an intercontinental title shot. Can I tell you something about this World Cup tournament? Sure. I... Uh, this was pitched from USA. Okay. For cool. for Raw a while ago. Uh I was told that they they had pitched this concept to WWE to do a World Cup tournament. Mm-hmm. And I guess WWE loved it so much that they brought it to SmackDown. <laughs> yeah, that's wild. <laughs> so I, I mean months ago, uh it was it was in one of the notes that I got, you know, before um uh, even before anybody was talking about, you know, what they were going to do with this. But interesting stuff. I'm curious how they do it. When it gets an icy title shot, that Marie Mysterio icy title match was great with Gunther, huh? Yeah. Uh, Ray, Ray still puts it on, man. Like, he's so good. He's got that crowd in the palm of his hand, you know, even though his moveset is, is like, super limited at this point. Well, I mean, you know what's amazing, it. though? He's still moving well. Yeah. And this was a guy that, you know, he, wow, well, my, my, uh, my headphones going, uh, this was a guy that, you know, when, remember when he was like banged up and injured constantly, he was really heavier on top, on the top before. Yeah. And then he went away. This was a guy that was like, his knees were done. He mm. was, he was always injured and he's had a decent run since he came back to this company. Oh yeah. Yeah. And decent storylines too. Like he's his creative he's, has he's been involved. Good. Yeah, they 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 you know he's involved. Obviously, the whole plan is to get his son over. They see something very much special in him. Uh, I'm curious <clears throat> yeah, what absolutely. they're gonna do with this. I I want those vignettes where you know they're just he's like gotten corrupted by this you know goth girl and they're he's showing up. She she shows up at the house and they're like smoking cigarettes in the back, mm. listen to really macabre music. Uh, clove cigarettes. Yeah, clove cigarettes. Clove, clove cigarettes and typo negative. Yeah, that's it. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Raw will be celebrating its 30th anniversary when the show gets goes to the Wells Fargo Center in Philadelphia. I was going to say May. Mon- Monday, January 23rd, 2023. The logo is very interesting. It is Raw is XXX. <laughs> oh yeah you know they were like they sat in that meeting they're like you know this this zarian guy kind of blew our spot with the tv 14 we're just gonna go x-rated at this point um <laughs> i'm curious what they do because this is the first time they are embracing the attitude era style retro show with the logo they've yes. generally done you know like and i never understood that right all those retro raws have been the early monday night raw stuff yeah, yeah. I never, which I never got. And what a great opportunity, right? You say Raw has attitude. You bring, you do that anniversary show. You go mm-hmm. all Attitude Era, and you bring out those older titles. Yes, Roman Reigns holding the winged eagle. Roman Reigns holding oh, whatever. Yeah. You know, like you could do something really unique and cool. And guess what happens when you have that title on TV? You know what you're going to be doing that night and the next day. 
selling a whole lot of them on WWShop.com. Oh, it's it's marketing 101. Hold on. There's an idea. Jonathan is here, and he said, can you please pop me up? Yeah, I have an idea. Yeah. Here he is. Okay, what's your idea? So here's what I think they should do for this. They should bring back WWE Times Square at a certain venue that may be in Times Square and do a, a second cast from there all night long. You know what? That would be fantastic. If only there was a wrestling insider that had a club <laughs> in Times Square. Only if we knew somebody. Maybe maybe I could reach out to that person and see there's some idea there. Very you'd interesting, have to, though. You, you'd have to mask the, the hell out of that place of business. I mean, you could do you could do like a uh, <clears throat> like a backstage thing, like live from Times Square, and it's like a Bradshaw bit. They like destroy the bar. We could do they could do something like that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the you, logo's you, interesting did, though. You know, I, I'm <clears throat> I'm actually surprised by that logo. Very surprised. That would not have that would not have happened under Vince. I'll tell you that. That restaurant was called the World, right? The World, yeah. And then what did it become? I think it became the Hard Rock. Yeah, did. did you go there? Did you have you gone to the WWE? I I, ha I was there. I was there twice. One when they first opened, and the food was actually not bad. Yes. And the second time I went, it was like, like frozen. It was everything was like TGI Friday frozen food. Yeah, I think that's. It, it started out strong. I remember I went there. I think I must have been like eighteen or nineteen. Cool environment. And cool environment. It looked cool, and I remember they. They. It was like. Um, you know, we had like burgers and like big beers and everything, and it was fun. And then, like you, like you, the next time I went, maybe like a year later, it was like it was like piss poor. It was depressing. It was very depressing. It was depressing. Very, they changed depressing. a lot of stuff. They used to have like that when you walked in, it was like a gigantic merch area and a yeah. signing area, and you could see the signings from the corner of like that Times Square window, which was really cool. Very, very interesting. Very uh, weird time. That thing became a nightclub yeah. after that. It became the world after that. It was a big nightclub for a while. Mm -hmm. And then they just gave up the lease, you know? Yeah, Sasha that's Banks, Hard Rock Cafe. Sasha Banks teased that something crazy is coming. She posted on her IG. You think she's showing up at Survivor Series? I think she's showing up at full gear. Yo, oh, my. <laughs> can you imagine that? Okay, here's a moment. Soraya is it, has that. Soraya? Soraya or Soraya? How do you say Soraya? I think it's Soraya. Soraya. She has her match, and then here comes Sasha at the end. I don't know. I think she's going back to WWE, to be honest. She was training with Hoovy. Did you know? Did you see that? Oh, interesting. It seems like mm -hmm. that's the obvious choice, right? Because like Triple H is bringing all his toys back. Yeah, of course. You know, like he's bringing all his his guys, and you know, we got we got Emma back, he's which Andy. I think is fascinating. You know, um, but. Listen, what if at full gear, Tony Storm retains, you hear some wacky ass music, Snoop Dogg shows up <laughs> and he's like, he's like, hey, everybody, this is my cousin. That's a nice, <laughs> soft spoken Snoop Dogg. I like that. Very hey, nice guys. and soft spoken. Uh, R-Truth underwent surgery, torn quad after his injury in NXT mm -hmm. when he faced Grayson Waller. Uh, terrible. Bad injury. Torn quad is never yeah. a fun injury. All and right. this is like he's been relatively healthy, right? For like the last yeah. seventy five years that yeah, he's been big wrestling. Time. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's uh let's go through this very quickly to Crown Jewel stuff and then we'll uh we'll go into the fallout. Yo, great show. How'd you feel about it? So I I you know, there was a lot of elements that I very much enjoyed about the show. Mm -hmm. I I I thought this was a easy show to watch. Mm -hmm. Um you know, interesting. I spoke to someone at WWE and I found this statistic to be fascinating, right? This was the most watched international PLE the company has ever done. Which is very interesting to me, considering, mm -hmm. you know, what, what made it that? Was it Logan Paul that made it that? It beat Extreme Rules as far as viewership goes. And Extreme Rules is a primetime show. And Extreme Rules was a decent show. Well, think about it. Like, without going into it in too much detail this was a very stacked show with a lot this is a strong roster in the show right? it was and i and i was told by somebody that mm -hmm. this this show gauged very well with kids oh i'm sure very well with kids and you got to think about it it's saturday afternoon your mom or your dad puts this on he's like hey you want to watch some wrestling in the afternoon and you're mm -hmm. watching brock lesnar at 12 in the afternoon 
Great. I mean, like Great. that sounds like that sounds like something we would love. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, which which we sh- I don't know why we didn't. No, what what was it that day? Oh, I had I had an event that day, so I was prepping the house for later. I Brock was Lesner, driving back from vacation too. You were uh, Brock Lesnar, Bobby Lashley, quick match. I thought this was a lot of fun. It was a very different type of Brock Lesnar match because Bobby Lashley destroyed him. They they work very well together. They do, and you know what? This is this match should have. You know what? This match should have happened. It's like a 2006, 2005 match. Yeah. Vince was was dying to have this kind of match Uh 15 years ago. Very interesting. Damage control with Io Sky and Dakota Kai defeated Alexa Bliss and Asuka to win the tag team championships again. All right. This was fun. Drew McIntyre defeated Karrion Cross in a steel cage match. I did not like this match. I didn't like a lot of the elements to this match. There was very the the I don't know if it's them. I don't I don't know what it was. How did you feel about this one? It was all right. You know, like this one, like I, I don't know. You know, I love Drew McIntyre, but I feel like for the last few months, a lot of the stuff that he's been involved with has lacked luster for me. You know, and I think it was it was it was fine. Yeah. Not bad. It wasn't great, you know, but it was it was just fine. I like I do like seeing I think the highlight for me was seeing Karen Cross again. And on a big stage. Yeah, and listen, I like Karrion for sure, and I think he has something. You know, the, the dude appeals to me. There's something he has. I don't know what happened with this feud, though. Like, the response has not been great. I don't think it's necessarily his fault. Some people are saying he grew his hair and he doesn't look as menacing. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing that, that I was thinking about this, I'm like, you know, maybe it's the cartoonish of this. You know, when you're in NXT and you do this act, yeah. It doesn't come off as hot, as cartoonish as it does on the main roster. You know, she's singing the lyrics. She's dancing around him. She's going under his... Like, maybe you pull back a little bit on that and have them be a little bit more stern. Yeah. And menacing. I don't know. We also got Judgment Day. Finn Balor, Damian Priest, and Dominic Mysterio mm-hmm. with Rhea Ripley defeating the O.C., this match was interesting for a number of reasons. One, uh, I like these guys in the ring with each other. I like Absolutely. everybody in this match. Chemistry. Um, Michael Cole referred to Luke Gallows as Doc Gallows and right. also referred to Carl Anderson as Machine Gun. Awesome. He, he referred to them as IWGP Tag Team Champions in the past. He referred to the Never Open Weight Championship that, Luke, uh, that Carl Anderson is holding. There were a lot of Bullet Club references in this match. Very... You know, those little things, again, you're going to look at this and say, well, is that that big of a deal? It's not that big of a deal, but you know what? With those little things, it made it tickled me. My ears perked up. Yes. I got a little excited about Michael Cole calling stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just adds another layer to somebody that has never heard of this or didn't expect it. You know what? It brought it, it made you pay attention. It makes you want to go. It, it was one of those old school things that remember during the Attitude Era where they'd mention certain things like that, and you'd be like, "Yo, I gotta find these tapes," you know, like I gotta find what what they're talking about. Is I think they did a good job with that. But like I do in our wrestling chat, I blow this way out of proportion, and I'm like, "It's gonna happen. You're gonna get Roman versus Okada. <laughs> this you relationship know, is gonna happen, oh, dude." You know, I, I have to tell you, I never wanted to see that match. Like it, it, it wasn't like mm-hmm. on my list of matches. However. I mean, if there was ever a possibility to do it, like that would be a great match to see. I don't think it would be a blockbuster, though. I think it would be a blockbuster. I disagree with you. I don't know how you can make it. But listen, I hope it is. I don't know how you can because the WWE audience relies so much on casual viewership, which it does. And, And listen, the hardcores are the hardcores. They'll always be there. But, you know, the people watching SmackDown, you don't have three million hardcore enthusiasts watching. You have maybe a million, million and a half, and then the rest is whatever that's tuning in. You know, like my well, dad. My dad doesn't okay. he knows who Okada is. He doesn't give a shit about Okada because it's not something that he, he it's on TV every week for him. Here's an interesting thought experiment. You ready? Yeah. Let's say at some point you get this nutty New Japan. WWE working relationship, right? Mm-hmm. They announce whatever show your main event, future main event. Sure. Okada versus Roman Reigns. Okay, right? cool. 
Yeah. If they announce that, do you not think? think that the diehard WWE fans like the international fans that come to WrestleMania every year don't you think they would plunk down money to go to wherever this match will take no, place no no like, I think it would be it would be a a, a super successful house mm -hmm. to have that show I'm saying like viewership interest okay viewership you know, can, interest sure. can you I'm giving an example, right? And, and we don't talk about pay-per-views because they're not in the pay-per-view model. But can mm -hmm. you bring another extra 300,000 eyeballs to this PLE because it's Okada? I don't know. I, I you know, Dave maybe can't. Maybe, you know what? I'll ask Dave this. I think that's a great question for Dave. I think if you put the WWE money machine behind really like, and it wouldn't take much, right, to make Okada seem like that once in a lifetime talent which he is but to the american audiences you know like as if he was like the last challenger for roman reigns or some shit like that what you know like it, punk? what if it's CM Punk? oh uh, all right fine can i, I can you i know tell what? you something so i'm i'm turned off by that guy so much at this point me too me too uh I, really he he broke my heart he very much upset me uh i i can tell you this though you know, when when all, a couple of weeks ago, when uh, the news came out that the that the investigation had settled and all this stuff, I reached out to a buddy of ours at WWE, uh -huh. and I wrote, "Hey, you got anything? Listen, either you could tell me yes or no, or you could tell me to go f myself. Uh -huh. You know, like like would you guys have you heard anything about interest? Would you be interest? Like what? I just wanted to gauge it, right?" And I go, or you could just tell me to go F myself. And he wrote back at like 1.30 in the morning. He goes, I would never tell you to go F yourself. That's my statement. <laughs> Period. There you go. So Did that's the official statement. Andrew Zarian said, you know, I asked WWE, you know, it was, I would never tell you to go F yourself. I wish you worded that, that text you sent better. And I wish you said. No, no, no. I, I didn't. I didn't say what I asked. I, I no, filled no, no, in no, a lot I, of these blanks. No, I understand. But instead of go F yourself, you should have said, am I bothering you or should I go to sleep right now? <laughs> there you go. And there, there's your answer. And if he texted you back, go to sleep. Then that you would means know. There, then I know. Oh, you smart know. boy, Rich. You are you a smart, know. smart boy. Yeah. Uh, um, which would have been great. Roman versus Punk. Great. You know, like is Punk yeah. going back to WWE? Is, I'm going to say it, something. Uh, is it I that think dopey he is. never say never nonsense? Yeah. I'm gonna you tell you so? something. I think he. I. I. I would be. I would be more shocked if he doesn't show up in, in WWE mm -hmm. it, sometime next year than I would be shocked if he never shows up. Just this guy's got the itch, right? This guy's Tony got Khan. the itch. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm sure he's very angry about the fallout of this. This was supposed to be his rehab of his image. Uh huh. I mean, that real. This really was. This was going to be his Shawn Michaels second run. And you know what? It. And he had a great <laughs> second run, though. You know, he did. forget about it. He, he had, and, and he worked with really interesting guys. He worked with Darby. Mm -hmm. He worked with Eddie Kingston. You know, he worked with MJF. I, you had, this guy should have been the guy that bridged that gap between the casual fan and the hardcore fan and then built new stars in that company. For sure. But instead, he he lost his mind in that in that presser. It, when you're frustrated, I understand. You know, adrenaline mm. is pumping. He had that match. I know we keep going back to it, but this was a big story this year. Yeah, and we're absolutely. still seeing the effects of this. AEW, it's not the same AEW post punk. It's very, it's very fascinating too, because that dude really his his song is the perfect example of how he is. He is a cult of personality. You know, like people live and die by that guy. You know, 930,000 views for, for AEW last night. Uh, I think Wednesday that's great. Night. You know what? That's great considering that it was an, a decent show. It was a decent show. They did a .32. It, they were number six on cable. There's competition. You know, mm. there's stuff going on. Uh, it was outranked by two NBA games on ESPN and three Fox News telecasts. Obviously, election week. You know, these things play a part, but... Here's the other thing. They are mm. sitting at the same spot. The growth has not really yeah. uh, been there. And I don't necessarily think it's because. I don't think it's because they are not producing good content. I think a lot of people, you know, the energy got taken out of that freaking room. And 
like I, that's how I feel. Like I, I generally feel affected by it, watching it because I'm like, mm-hmm. this bummed me out. Like I don't. Reg- yeah, we're talking about it because it's a huge part. But like, I hate the backstage nonsense. Yeah, this is Fandrew's Aryan talking. Fandrew, this is Fandrew's Aryan talking. Like, I don't report <laughs> any backstage shit like that ever. Like, right. how many times have we been told something and I'm like, Rich, this stays between us. Nobody's going to, I'm never, ne- we're never going to talk about this because yeah. I just, I want to see great TV. I don't want, I don't yeah. want backstage gossip dominating the story. And you know what? MJF, that promo we cut yesterday, uh, that, that pre record, what was he on? Part of my take. He, they did this, 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 the uh, radio station promo. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, very good. He he said everything that I've been saying. You know, who got hurt by all of this? He got hurt. His return got screwed up. Not only did his return get screwed up, uh, his his run got screwed up. Also, Kenny Omega returning became right. a non-story because CM Punk was shooting. Exactly. What are you gonna do? It, th- like all this stuff. Like again, uh, I'm in the same boat you are. Uh, I could care less about the backstage politics. Like I just want good wrestling for everybody who likes to watch wrestling. You know. Um, but I, that kind of behavior reminds me of like all those stories you hear about WCW. Exactly. And I, listen, we, we talk about this all the time, right? We like positivity in wrestling. There's so many shows out there that, that, that can concentrate on the negative and the problems and that's great for them. And they're very successful with it. Mm -hmm. They're very, very successful with it. And no knock, you know, there is. That's a market that needs to be catered to. That's not the market I'm catering to. I like exactly. I do this because I enjoy it. Rich, you and I do this because we freaking love talking about wrestling. That is true. And even when we're not doing the show, we're still talking about wrestling. And we're still talking about wrestling. I don't think people realize that. Like we we genuinely love wrestling. It, it's something from our childhood that we never left. And it's awesome. And there's millions of other people that also feel the same way. There's hundreds of people yeah. listening to us right now that feel the same way. Horny Harry Tarjanian, he just celebrated his 48th birthday last Happy. week. This guy <laughs> started off loving Bruno San Martino. He got super horny for Bruno, and look at him now. He was there. He was there. He was there in 1978. Uh, 50-year-old Harry Tarjanian. <laughs> 50 years old in 78. He saw Bruno drop that title against superstar Billy Graham. Happy birthday to the horny one. Uh, horny Harry. The horniest of them horny. Of the horny. Harry Tarjanian. Uh, he had a booth at Exotica this year. Did you know that? Oh, I believe it. He, he did. probably had a line he was selling around the block. All this, yeah, he had a line around the block. He was selling a bunch of merch at Exotica. Rob Van Dam was at Exotica. <laughs> he, uh, Harry Turgenian had a line around the block that still wasn't as long as his fill in the blank. Uh, Ivan Putsky <laughs> for life. You know, I got a great Ivan Putsky story. My wife's uh, best friend, Maggie, Magda, she's Polish. Uh-huh. And her father, every time she, he sees me, he looks at me and he goes, Ivan Putsky. Every time, <laughs> every hysterical. time he just says Ivan Putsky to me and walks away. Uh, can we go back to Crown Jewel? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so let's just talk about that main event, though. Okay, let's talk about the main. We'll skip everything. We'll go into the main event because we we have no time today. Uh, dude, I got to tell you, four and a half stars. Dave Meltzer gave it. Yeah. I agree with him a hundred percent. Yes, I will remove. I don't. I, I've never once watched a Logan Paul content anything i've never yeah, watched maybe. a jake paul thing i only i think i watched it when tim dylan was on uh uh-huh. because i'm supporting his my friend you know I, i've known him forever so he was on so like i watched it i watched some of it i actually went shopping with him to get his shirt when he was on jake paul's podcast this is a hysterical story who tim dylan tim dylan tim dylan and i remember, I, I remember you telling me about that yeah it's hysterical um tim and i got got lunch at uh uh where did we go i think we went to the beverly hills hotel because they got like a nice little breakfast. It's an old school hotel. Uh, we had breakfast. It was great. We're talking. And, and you know, he's a hysterical dude. Like, I, I adore him. I really do. Yeah. We, we, you know, we're hanging out. And he's like, he's like, hey, I'm going on this podcast. Do you, I got to buy your shirt. You want to come with me? And I'm like, yeah, let's go. So where do we go? We're on Rodeo Drive. Where do you think we end up? Uh, the buyer's. Where? To buy a shirt for his big appearance on Jake Paul's podcast, we end up at the Rochester Big and Tall. There you go. <laughs> we and he's picking out these shirts. He's picking out his outfit, and that that the the I guess the 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 customer service person right over there sees the engagement, and he looks at me, and she goes, he goes, "It's really great that you're supporting him like this, and you're you know you're helping him shop." And oh, then yeah. I realize that he she thinks we're a couple. 
So I play into it a little bit. You know, I'm like, yep. I'm so proud of him. I absolutely love him. I'm so proud. You know, he's worked so hard at his career, blah, blah, blah. I, I start talking about him like, like, a, like a loving spouse the entire time. And right. she was thrilled. He wore the shirt though on the show. That that's my uh, that's my that's the only time I've I've I know anything about his podcast, Jake Paul's podcast. But dude, for, let's remove all the nonsense. This guy is remarkable. Yeah. <laughs> his third match with Ridiculous. Roman Reigns in a mega main event in a stadium. He didn't screw up once. This guy looked like a million bucks, and he finished the match with like a torn everything. He busted. What did you give me your assessment of him? Like, give me your thoughts. Like, do you think this guy could do something more? What do you mean? Like, in terms of like improvement? No, I'm saying like, could he become a regular? I think so. I think so. I think I think where he is now is perfect as like this like offbeat attraction, you know. And I think once he ne- once he gets his footing more so with that regular WWE fan base, they'll bring him back more and more and more you know and this is kind of interesting where you know at where we stand now i would rather watch a logan paul match than a ronda rousey match in wwe yeah isn't that something it is it really is i feel like they're tying some kind of wagon to logan paul in a very interesting way and i think everybody backstage working with him is doing a great job the match with robin was fan friggin tastic yeah and they're both like and it what i really liked is that it looked like he was a threat to roman you know he's a big yeah. dude he's got an interesting move set would you consider him kind of like a high flyer i mean that jump from the top to the outside was unbelievable unbelievable he, he's a super athlete how about how about that superman punch spot you know where he's like Amazing. 80 feet in the air and you know i i gotta say like for all the people that say like the celebrity wrestling, it takes away a spot. Like I saw, I saw all that nonsense on on Twitter, right? It's right, taken away right. a spot. It's taken away what a guy that that you have on your TV weekly losing. Exactly, like, like there, it's taken like, away his loss. Like I, I, it's an there's attraction. There's a weird, yeah. I think there's a weird jealousy with that stuff. You know, there's like a deep seated jealousy when people complain about things like that, you know, where it's like, oh, this guy, the guy who does videos of himself, like he's on TV. And you know what? And that guy is, is, do you know how difficult it is to make a match look good? Like, obviously, Roman Reigns, great partner to be in the ring with, right? Because the guy's absolutely perfect. But you, you can't, you can only make, you know, a turd look so good. (laughs) You can't, exactly. You can't do magic. And this dude is good. Logan Paul is good. I mean, for for a guy that's had three matches with the, with the, you know what he doesn't have, and this is a big thing: the the fight or flight, right? Mm. The fight or flight plays a big part in this because if you are put in a position where it's not your, this is not your sport, you are, you know, people dislike you for whatever reason that they have. You are new to this. You're in a stadium. You're up against. I mean, probably the greatest guy that they've made over the last decade in that company that mm-hmm. is like per- solidified as probably one of their best world champions. Absolutely. Right. You're going in the ring. Most normal people will have that those butterflies that tells them, oh, shit, this guy has none of that. He was like, I'm good. I'm in there. He he played the role so well. Uh, you got to give him all the credit in the world. You also have to think about, like, this guy's a celebrity, right? Millionaire. Doesn't have to do this. Yeah. And the travel time and the travel that going to Saudi Arabia takes out of you. And like I said, this guy is a celebrity. He is like this. His demographic is way younger than how old we are. You sure. Know? Yeah. Um, For him to get on that plane, go there, have the match that he had. And wow, people, good for him, man. I wonder if, like, the people in the back are like, yo, he's one of the boys. Like, he's a good brother. I don't know. I, I'd love, you know, I could ask. I could find out. But I think a lot of people are very impressed by his dedication, mm. you know, and how well he did. Uh, very impressive stuff. Yeah. And the guy got injured. So hopefully he comes back sooner than later. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's go. Where do you want to go here? Want to go to let's, Dyn- Dynamite or Raw? Let's do dynamite and then we'll take questions. It's eleven sure. seventeen and okay. uh, we gotta be out of here in about twenty minutes. All right, perfect. They, let me check the train schedule because they uh they uh they changed they changed the train here, so they're getting ready for that. 
No, I don't want to go to Port Washington. I want to go to Penn Station. You should, you should just go the opposite direction. Okay, I got 1158 and I got a 1227. Aim for the 1158 because okay, I have I'm to aiming. also okay, All right, get go. out of here sooner than All right, later. So we'll, we'll wrap up at like uh, mm. 20 minutes. All right. All right. Uh, let's see where we are right now. Uh, Dynamite, Wednesday night. Uh, show opened with uh, the acclaimed and FTR beating the guns and swerving our glory. Fun match. Uh, yeah. A lot of good moments. A lot of good okay. wrestling. Can I? I want to bring this up. Did you notice they were going a million effing miles an hour in this match? Yeah. 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 It, was it uh, because I came home? I got home like a couple minutes into this match and I was watching. I'm like, the pacing wasn't very, like, very high. Everybody worked Hot. hard at this. Hot, yeah. Very Hot good match. match. Hot match. Uh, you have Stokely Hathaway coming up, coming out, uh, saying that he grew up with MJF. Uh, great promo. I'm glad they let him shine on the mic as opposed to like his time in NXT. He Stokely said MJF's dick riding John Moxley without a license. Great line. Great line. So this is going to obviously play a part in this match. So mm -hmm. do you have? Soakley Hathaway screw MJF over and you turn him into a mega baby face now. I think it's all part of the MJF plan to remain the biggest heel in that company. I hope so. I hope he remains the biggest heel in that company. I mean, the guy is hot, so very interested to see what they do here. Ethan Page defeated Eddie Kingston to advance in the title eliminator tournament match. This is fascinating. Ethan Page, mm -hmm. uh, somebody told me that they want to push him. I, I, listen, man, I'm high on Ethan Page since. He was in Evolve. Oh, yeah, dude. This dude murdered Darby Allen, threw him against that post. I, it was so impressive to see them do that kind of stuff. Uh, very good talker. Obviously, he got his body in shape. He looks great. Great. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's a lot that you could do with a with a uh, Ethan Page. Yeah. But is AEW the place for him? You know, uh, we've talked about this uh, quite a lot, where some of these guys may get lost in the shuffle, but I'm glad that he is really not you know what i mean like a lot of those those guys who got signed kind of disappeared a little bit um he's hanging on there and i think he's gonna he's gonna grow to be a hotter commodity I hope so. um what happened to the the page van zant stuff is that like done and dan lambert yeah yeah page is gonna uh, be appearing uh somewhere here in new york city uh next month very interesting like because i i really enjoyed that stuff like america's top team with i have you know, the answer yeah. to that okay you tell me uh, so Paige Van Zant had that bare knuckle fight scheduled in July, and it got mm -hmm. it got uh, postponed, and then it was for October, and it got canceled, and so she's in limbo. She was in it. She was in the middle of a training camp because she was in a training camp. Okay, got yeah. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got it. And now she's got other. No, she she's no joke. That Paige Van Zant. Uh, yeah, bare knuckle boxing, bare knuckle fighting. Holy moly! Awesome. <laughs> Unbelievable. You got to be wired a certain way. Mm -hmm. Wardlow defeated Arya Davari to retain the TNT title after the match Wardlow called out Hobbs. Um, so Fun. this is interesting, right? He also wanted all the titles, which led Joe attacking him, possibly a three-way now at full gear. What title do you put up? So it would be Joe's title, Joe's TV title, the TNT title. Yeah. And uh, Hobbs doesn't have anything. So what do you Maybe do here? If, if Hobbs gets the FTW title somehow? I don't know, but you know, you could do something where like, you know, Warlow doesn't yeah. really lose or Joe doesn't lose and now you have, you know, one a one-on-one -on -one set up for that Ring of Honor pay-per-view and he could do title yeah. for title. Yeah. So, some, you know, Wardlow could become the Ring uh the Ring of Honor television champion and he could do something there. I I don't know. I think, I, I'm it's a lot of stuff moving. I think that would be cool if Wardlow got the TNT title and the, the TV title, and then that leaves Joe to pursue the ROH heavyweight title, right? Sure, yeah. I feel I like think, that's you know what? That might the be the way to do they it. Should go. Yeah, that's the direction they should go, because that's going to be like a, the, the four-way for the Ring of Honor title is going to be like a rocket match. But here's, here's my deal. Once that Ring of Honor TV is set, which mm -hmm. it, it is set for the new year, right? We're going to find out next month. Once that TV set, I don't want to see these titles on AWTV. Okay, fair enough. You could do a once a year 
mm-hmm. internal feud. You could do a pay-per-view. Add a pay-per-view. Here you go. You add a pay-per-view. And it becomes yeah. AEW versus Ring of Honor. And you could do something very different and very cool. Okay, Invasion. cool. I'm into it. Invasion. I know that Warner Media wants more shows. There you go. Discovery wants more shows. Uh, that that's that's a given, which is a very positive sign for AEW because they're going into a contract year. So if you could do another pay per view or another two pay per views a year, and make some money on it, and also remember where is where is Ring of Honor going to be streaming? Exactly. Right now it's BR Live. So fingers crossed for HBO Max. Oh man, but they don't have the live aspect to it yet. Yeah. They don't have it, you know. They they have live for like the channels, but they don't have like a dedicated pay per view model. Showtime just started doing that, by the way. Showtime now has a pay per view model, which mm-hmm. is working very well for them for their Showtime boxing series. So this may be something that they're going to start doing also for HBO. We'll see what happens. Um. All right, where are we now? Britt Baker, uh, yeah. Soraya promo battle. You know this was good. A couple of things. Yeah. Couple of things here, though. What stood out to you? Because there was there was one thing that I didn't like. What didn't you like? I didn't like the "you're below me" because you never wrestled at the Garden, and you never because he's essentially saying you are second rate because you were never in WWE. I think that's a little. That's a good play on words, though. It is. It's a great play on words, but. You know, what did you just tell the audience? This big star that just showed up here mm-hmm. is way bigger than the person that we have built over the last four years, which is true. But do you say that to the audience? I think you're going to get the double turn with this one. You think so? Yeah, I think I think Brit's time as a heel is over. Fascinating. OK, you know what? Yeah. I would love that. She got very emotional. So- I think Soraya, Soraya makes a better heel than Britt Baker, to be honest with you, you know, because I think she's got that like, I'm going to she can make people hate her just as much as she can make people like her. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Baker said Soraya had the audacity to call AEW her house when she never laid a single brick there. I thought that was a good line. Mm. Uh, they don't they don't walk. They don't take walk ins. <laughs> she goes and they don't take walk ins. Bitch, make an appointment, which got a big pop from the audience. Soraya said that she had been hit by a car, wrestled the same day because she loves the business. Uh, She was embarrassed publicly, battled a drug addiction publicly, which, you know, Mm. she was embarrassed publicly. This this, this woman took or girl or whatever you want to say. Can you I, I, I how do you how do you go on social media when something like that happens? You know what I mean? Right, yeah. She saw it all. She heard it all, and she's still here. Uh, you know, it just shows you how vile some people are. But, oh, yeah. Uh, you know, she, she's now in AEW, and she's this is the second run of her career, and let's see what she could do. The promo ended up selling this really well. So Very we'll much see, so. Yeah, so we'll see how they, how they determine the match. Jay Lethal defeated Trent Beretta. Uh, Trent's great. What a great hand. After... Uh-huh. <laughs> my world plays and Jeff Jarrett comes out threatens the, the production assistant with his guitar for wrapping him up so I mean how much do you love Jeff Jarrett you personally oh, I'm, I'm stuck in the vortex dude I know it's, it's like it's, it's possessed me Jeff Jarrett has possessed me I, I did not think I wanted to see anything from Jeff Jarrett but every time I hear that song play it triggers all these flashbacks of the worst of TNA in my head, and then guys, I curl into a ball. I get shell shocked. Guys, I'm going to be honest with you. In our wrestling production group chat, <laughs> yeah, oh, Andrew. I, honestly, this, like, is, this is not a joke. This is the truth. Sometimes Andrew will just send us like 15 Jeff Jarrett pictures, like Swear different Jeff Jarrett pictures, and different Jeff Jarrett clips, and different Jeff Jarrett promos. And I'm that's why I asked. I wanted a publicly. And I great. How much do you love Jeff Jarrett? Or is it like this morbid fascination where you're like, I, you're, you're can't get out of this hole you're in? I can't get like, out of the hole I'm in. I, like, I do think it's unbelievable resilience this man has in the business. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he has accomplished everything you can accomplish in professional mm-hmm. wrestling. Mm-hmm. It, it, it just shows you that if you are, you know, you know I, I got it. He's a very smart guy, Jeff. Yeah. Um, I hope he's a great asset to that company. Now, do I want to see him have a match every week? No, I don't. But 
I think he could lay some sort of foundation to this company with his 40 yes. some odd years of experience of working in every single territory known to man from the mm-hmm. 80s on. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I, I, I think this is a positive for them. I don't think this is a negative. And is he still under contract with WWE? <laughs> and he's still in contract with WWE, GCW, and TNA, dude. Isn't that unbelievable? Uh, GCW. This is this is all a ruse. This is all a ruse. He's GFW, his GFW, and GCW. It, this he's this is all a ruse. He's saving all his money, his Jared bucks, and he's gonna buy everything and just name it um, GFW, GFW, Global Force Wrestling. Fantastic. Yep. Uh, John Moxley in ring promo said MJF remind remind rem mm. MJF reminded MJF, him and Regal of a young Moxley. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And you know what? I watch this and I watch it with my wife. And I lost my mind because I was like, yo, it's really nuts how they're referencing a angle that happened in FCW with no TV on an internet show on the janky WWE website. I and know. they're referencing it in 2022. And this ha- this should happen over 10 years ago. Yeah. Where Moxley and Regal had this dynamite effing feud. On an FCW. And... It's still percolating now. Fascinating. Fascinating. It's really cool. That's like real that 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 kind of wrestling stuff gives me goosebumps. Because I remember watching it and being like, yo, this is amazing TV. And Mox would come out with the leather jacket and the underwears. And you know, he gave Regal a knee trembler at, to end that feud. Unbelievable. Jamie Hayter defeated Sky Blue. Okay. That was cool. something. Okay. Uh, <laughs> two out of three falls. I'm, I'm, we're running out of time. Sorry, guys. Yeah, two yeah. out of three falls. Brian Danielson defeated Sammy Guevara. Danielson took the first fall when Sammy got DQ'd using Tay as a screen and threw a chair in his mm-hmm. face. Sammy ties it with a pump knee uh, and a GTH. Danielson gets the third fall uh, with anvil elbows led to a label lock to the submission. Uh, this was a good match. But what are you doing with Danielson, dude? What are you doing with him? Hey, he won, right? Would you have yeah. been more upset if he lost this? Very much so. He needs more wins. I think they're I think they're they're keeping him warm. You know, they're not heating him up as much as we want just yet. I think they're keeping him warm. Can, can I tell you something that's probably gonna drive you nuts? My wife right yeah. now. My yeah, wife right uh, now. My wife is rearranging our bedroom and putting all the Christmas decoration up. I think you guys should uh, get a Murphy bed. A Murphy bed. I would love a Murphy yeah. bed. Uh, she <laughs> She, you know how she puts like Christmas trees in every room of the house. Yes, yeah. That, how that many do you have now? Like, what's what's the count now? I, I think we were at nine last year. You know what's funny? Like when I went to your house last year, it's Chris, beautiful Chris. They're all beautiful, by the way. Yeah, it's Christmas tree in your living room, but then like the the kitchen Christmas tree is also in the same line of sight. <laughs> it is, and then and then how about the and then there's the mini the little trees everywhere, the little Christmas yeah. trees everywhere, and then the bedroom has a full Christmas tree in it also. And my bathroom has a Christmas tree next to the tub. In the toilet. In the, to- in the <laughs> toilet. Yeah. Uh, Rampage tonight. I'm not going to go into spoilers here. AEW full gear card is shaping up. Here's what we have so far. AEW World Title Eliminator Tournament Finals. Soraya and Britt Baker. Jeff Jarrett, Jay Lethal versus Sting and Darby Allen. We are getting Jeff Jarrett and Sting once again in 2022. Unbelievable. Uh, TBS Championship. Jade Cardgill and Nyla Rose. Uh, AW World Tag Team Championship match. The Acclaimed versus Swerve in Our Glory. This is going to culminate now at, at, at this show. I'm curious where they go from here. Interim AW Women's World Champion. Tony Storm versus Jamie Hayter. This is going to be a hard-hitting match. ROH World Champion Chris Jericho versus Dan- Brian Danielson versus Sammy Guevara versus Claudio Castagnoli. So... You could tell the story about Sammy turning on Chris and Claudio mm-hmm. turning on Danielson or Danielson turning on Claudio and one of them winning it. I think Danielson should win this title. There's a lot of history with these guys, and I feel like this is going to be the match where they all kick Sammy's ass, like a welcome to the club kind of yeah. thing. All right, cool. I'm into that. AW World Championship, John Moxley and MJF. This is Saturday, November 19th, next week. Uh, 25th anniversary of the Montreal Screwjob was Wednesday. Fascinating stuff. Uh, yeah. What would have been different if Brett never left? That's a question that a lot of people talk about. Again, the thing that you mentioned in our wrestling chat before 
uh, sending us 85 Jeff Jarrett pictures. Um, you and I are of the same mindset with this, right? I think so. Yeah, we are both in the same. I, I, I think that, you know, a lot of stuff would have still happened, but a lot of stuff would never have happened. Uh, you know, there, there's there's a couple of these, you know, that spot would have never been Sean and, and him. It would have been Brett and him at WrestleMania. It would have been a way better match. But the fallout is what made WWF become the commodity they became. So if Brett's still there, you don't really need Mr. McMahon being everywhere. And I think the spectacle of Vince taking your shirt off and being this jacked up old dude mm -hmm. changed a lot of this to people. It was like shock yeah. TV. Yeah. We should do an episode of the Montreal Screwdrop, even though like probably every single podcast has done it ad nauseum. I think ours will be a little wacky and a little more fun because I like we're on the same page with this stuff, like I, like almost 100 percent, you know? Yeah. Question do questions? time. Yeah, let's do it. All right, guys, uh, submit your questions. We're going to do the Super Chats first. Uh, so if you want a question answered quickly, you can Super Chat us any amount. Uh, we're going to knock these out for you because our window is closing and we're going to turn back into pumpkins. Yes, we will. Okay. All right. Got a Super Chat here from Shreyer Hashemi. Hello, my Matt Men potato friends. I can't watch in real time, but I want to know who are your top three wrestlers on the mic? Of all time or current? Uh, he didn't say. So let's say current right now. Okay, current. Okay, I would say uh, MJF for sure. Agreed. Okay, fantastic on the mic. Um, Roman's been fantastic on the mic. Who's my third? Third currently fantastic on the mic. Give me somebody. Who am I missing? Uh, I'll go MJF, Mox, and Cody. That's my three. All right, that's great. All right. Yeah, you very know. good. Uh, Ray Wyatt, all time, Ray all time, all time. Um, Steve Austin, Dusty Rhodes. I mean, there's so many. Flair, like Flair. Uh, I mean, I can't even do top three. I, uh, it, it, you know, it depends. Like, there's someone, some people that I that I really enjoy their promos, and they were not considered great. But I'm like, I always love a good Bret Hart promo. Yeah, yeah. Even like the ones where he's not like super stiff. Those were you no, know, you know. Um, Austin was fantastic. I mean, there's so many of them. I, I, it's, it's. You know what? I'm gonna think about that. That's a good question. That That's I good unfortunately, question. yeah, very good question. Got me stumped. Uh, this is from Batcher Three Thousand. As always, Happy Friday, Playboys. Oh, Happy Friday to you. Can I start Let's calling people Playa? You think I can start doing that? Can I pull it off? I don't know what if a you can Playa get away with that. What a player. Maybe. Yeah. And I think uh, I think Batcher 3000 sent us another super chat. Thank you. I think we lost it, but I, I remember it said we love you too. That may have been directed towards uh, Horny Harry. It could have been Horny Harry. It's, it's just everything Horny Harry all the time. I want to start uh, changing my the language I use. I want to start throwing in words that, you know, I want to tr try new words. You want to, why don't you start using words that you don't know? the me of because it makes you sound intelligent <laughs> this is totally you're being, wrong you're being very obsequious right now obsequious yeah it's a good word that's a good ten dollar word that's a great ten dollar uh, word this is from dr pepper is my dad son of pepper how do you think aw goes about the elite's return at full gear yeah i i mean i don't know i don't know if they're going to put them in a trios thing or you're going to have them interject in the tag title thing you can maybe do something where they kind of split up and they they start pushing it you know, they start Kenny comes up at the end of the, the the world title match and the Bucks go to the tag team title match. FTR gets involved because, you know, that's a big match that people want to see where FTR has all this gold and they put maybe they could do put everything on the line. Mm -hmm. I want to uh, see that know, match. I would like them to do a like really angry and quick return because whenever these guys come back, they come back like all cool and slow and shit. Right. Yeah. I would like an like an end of whatever match to happen, and then the Bucks and Kenny just run out and start kicking everybody's ass like they All clean right. house. That'd be cool. This is from Vegan. Would they still have brought in Tyson for Mania if Brett never left? I don't know. That's a great question. I don't. I don't think they would have. Why would they have? Because remember that money opened up to get Tyson because they weren't paying Brett. 
And also business got, you know, from mm -hmm. November 97 to March of 98. That, that there was a mm -hmm. major financial shift in WWE. Like they weren't winning on uh, with the ratings, you know, but mm -hmm. the the gates were hot. People were into it. The DX was popping, you know. But it, remember, it was such a weird time at that moment. Like Sean and Sean and Austin did not mesh well. That was the not a good main event. And do you know how I know it's not a good main event? There is one thing that you remember from that match. Do you know what it is? The and it's not my stunner. The spinning stunner. It's not yeah. even Tyson being involved. I cannot tell you. I, I and I've watched that match numerous times. Like that's the only mm -hmm. that was the only like wow. Think of that high spot. He caught his leg, he spun him around, and he stunned him, and that was the high spot. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Game over. I still love that match though. Even though, like, when you listen to Austin talk about it, he put he points out every single flaw that he felt. Dog he shit. Had it was dog match. shit. He said it, he said he hates it. And that Sean tried to um because hey, apparently Sean. like Sh Sean's cardio is up there with the greatest of the great yeah and I think I remember Stone Cold saying like Sean tried to get me to blow up quickly because nobody could keep up with him you know you know who died Gallagher 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 the, the watermelon guy the watermelon guy he's dead like right now right now yeah, so did, apparently so did Kevin Conroy, the voice of uh, Batman on the animated series. Really? Apparently yesterday. Yeah, like there's oh reports my God. that he, he passed away yesterday. Gallagher, one of the most popular comics of the 1980s, known for his fruit smashing act, has died at the age of 76. I think you should start smashing fruit on the show. Oh, dude, I can't wait to start doing that. I look forward to that. Give me like, give me, like all the fruits. Lay down, put a watermelon on top of your junk, and <laughs> we'll have we'll have MG Geek. We'll have MG Geek just headbutted until it breaks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're getting yelled at. We're running. We're running. We're running. Uh, what time do I have to get on this train? I got two minutes. You got okay. two more minutes. I, I got right. two minutes. All right, let's go. You ready? Okay, yeah. this is a good one from the Shadow Ranger. Um, WWE Impact, AEW, and New Japan all offer you a contract. Okay, they're for the same money. Where do you sign? Oh, okay. WWE Impact, AEW, New Japan offer me a contract. Um, yeah. How I would say talking. I would say it would be between WWE and New Japan. If it was me. If it was you, I would probably yeah. go to AEW. Really? Lighter schedule. Things are a little bit more relaxed there. I have a and decent well, I got a decent relationship at both companies. Andrew Zarian is all elite. What would I do? What's my As job? You You're a wrestler. I'm a wrestler. You're a I, jobber. I'm a jobber? <laughs> job. Or am I working backstage? I don't want to wrestle. I want to be no, in the No, you're on TV. You're I'm on, on TV. TV. Oh, crap. Yeah. Uh, I, I, you know what? WWE. If I'm on TV, I want to go to WWE. That's what I'm saying. Like, if you're on yeah. TV, you want, you want like, T-shirt sales and you want yeah. appearances and shit. You want to be in WWE. I would say New Japan just because, like, you know, maybe I want to wrestle Shibata. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rich because Shibata. then, you know what? Then I'm going to have to explain to people, like, oh, yeah, Andrew, Andrew's on that wrestling show. And they're going to be like, oh, WWE? And they're like, no, 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 the other one. Yeah. No, I'll go to WWE. Uh, I, New Japan. Rich versus Okada, I immediately pass out in the first two seconds of the match. <laughs> <laughs> you just throw up? Uh, I, I throw up and black out completely. And then Okada actually just carries me to the back. And and Andrew, Zarian, the match Andrew Zarian versus Roman Reigns on SmackDown. Immediately pass out and throw up. <laughs> I, I, will pass, I will throw up as soon as Michael Cole reads that progressive ad. I'm just vomiting. For some reason, you have a watermelon in front of your crotch, and Roman Reigns super punches it, and that's it. <laughs> but that's his weakness. That's how I beat him. There was something. It was. It was a. There was a. There was a foreign object in the watermelon. He gets a seed in his eye. He gets a seed in his eye. And I get the roll up, and you I do a school boy, and I run out the freaking door. That's it. I'm out of there. The most devastating Regardless, move in pro wrestling. If we were ever in a ring, the uh, the smart money is us passing out immediately. <laughs> Listen, I, and and I'm gonna tell you something. Do do you want to? Our, our egos, right, uh -huh. reflect on what we say. I didn't come out here, and you right. didn't come out here and be like, yeah, and I'll, and I'll, and I'll punch him, and I'll do this, and I'll win this. <laughs> I'm like, no, dude, I'll, I'll, I'll throw up in the ring. <laughs> 
I'll get the jitters. <laughs> I'll probably trip over my own sneakers. I'll probably I'm like I'll do one of these as I'm walking down the ramp and I'll lose my footing. I'll probably say something like real stupid, you know. Oh my god. Like, will you marry me? <laughs> Roman, I got one question for you. Will you marry me? You get into a lockup. You get into a lockup with Roman Reigns, and you're like, yo, man, you smell so good. <laughs> What's your conditioner? <laughs> and that's it. Uh, Roman, is that Pantene Pro V? <laughs> <laughs> he does have beautiful hair, though. I'm gonna. Can I? Can I give Roman some advice? Listen, I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna save you a lot of headache. OK, I know you're a tough dude. You probably don't even give a shit. Like, you're like, if I lose my hair, I lose my hair. Right. Go on Finance Stride like now. Ooh. go on Finance Stride and save that beautiful head of hair that you have. Um, Me versus Okada. Okada close li- close lines me over the barricade and yeah. I just walk out of the arena. <laughs> <laughs> do you, no, you do the Undertaker thing. You know, Sully, you do the Undertaker thing and he just walk out and be like, all right, good night, everybody. You do I one leave. Of these. I, I trade places with a fan and I just oh. sit in the crowd for the rest of the show. All right. We just did, we just did fan fiction. This was fantastic. All, all right. right. I think we should go. We're done. All right. Do you have any, any more or no? That was it. Let's do one um, more. All right. Let's do one more. Let's see. How would you, this is from uh, Vegan. How would you guys book uh, Roman vegan? Reigns' loss for Far the this weekend, John. Love us. Oh, boy. Okay. Sorry. I had to. Stop speaking. Speaking that crazy Klingon, Jack. It's a Klingon, I'm telling you. Uh, <laughs> who would you guys book to beat Roman for the title in 2024? Cody. By the way, that's Absolutely. the second time I've ever spoken Armenian on the air. Cody. That's the second time. Uh, Cody, uh, you have to, you got to make a kingmaker. You know, I do think it would be a fin- like an f- interesting idea if mm-hmm. Sami Zayn did it. Yeah. But you just built this guy up like a thousand days as world champion to make a, you know, a comedy work. So it has to be someone serious. I don't know, yeah. man. You know, and the other thing is the, I would do Cody like today, but we don't know what yeah. Cody's coming back as. Like, yeah. did that ship yeah, yeah. sail? Did that ship no. sail? Did, did people kind of cool on him? Because you got to make this into something big, something yeah. really big. Or do you do Dwayne? Ooh, Dwayne. I keep calling him Dwayne now because people are getting so mad. Well, you're on a first name basis. I am. Yeah. I am the Rock's cousin. So are you. Everybody's the Rock's cousin. I took that ancestry test. That's what it showed me. It was just mm-hmm. a picture of his giant head and said, your cousin. You took that DNA test and it's confirmed that you're 100% the Dwayne the Rock's the cousin. The Dwayne the Rock's the cousin. <laughs> uh, Eddie says, Chelsea Green and Nick Aldis to WWE. Yeah, Chelsea Green. I, I, I've heard that Nick Aldis would be fantastic. You know, but I don't understand why they haven't gotten him yet nick aldis is a very impressive looking guy big boy he's good a big worker. boy he's a classic act i don't know how that'll translate but man you know get another guy like him that looks like a world champion you're yeah. gonna tell a story yeah for sure pro wrestling joe good show my lads thank you thanks we are good lads. thanks joe. all right are we done are we done all right thank you vegan for that question Mwah. all right guys fun. that's it for today i gotta take the train I got to go. I got 10 minutes. Sayonara. Goodbye. Love you all. Hey, guys.